live on your coffee break. It's Friday, April 15th. I'm Kate Chaplinski, and you're watching the HAN Network. We're going to bring you a rundown of the latest news today, and Don Eng is actually joining me with the latest forecast, and of course, he'll be taking a look back on this day in history later on. We also have a sports update with Rob Adams. But first, on to today's news. Family members of the students and adults killed in the 2012 shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary School will proceed with their lawsuit against gun companies after a Superior Court judge in Bridgeport Thursday denied motions to have the case dismissed. Judge Barbara Bellis denied dismissal, dismissal motions filed by the Remington's arms, arms Company, Bushmaster Firearms, Camphor Holding, and Riverview Gun Sales of East Windsor to have the lawsuit brought by relatives of Sandy Hook victims tossed out. Mm -hmm. Remington Arms, Camphor, and Riverview Gun Sales had sought to have the case dismissed under the Protection of Lawful Commerce in Arms Act and the Connecticut Unfair Trade Practices Act. Josh Koskoff, the attorney representing the families, called the decision a huge victory. But there's a lot more on that story at StraffordStar.com. And in other news today, Milford police have arrested a suspect in Wednesday's robbery at People's United Bank in downtown Milford. Police took the suspect, 37-year-old Paul Bam O of Bridgeport, into custody around 11 o'clock at night Wednesday and charged him with robbery, larceny, and possession of narcotics. Police said the suspect entered the bank through the front door, approached a teller, and passed a note that said, give me the money and you won't get shot. According to witnesses, no weapon was displayed during that robbery. After receiving the money, a, the suspect left on foot out the rear door toward Central Avenue. A police canine was used to track the suspect to the area of Central Ave and Lafayette Street, where it is believed he fled in a vehicle. Police quickly circulated a photo of the suspect through local media, and investigators received a tip regarding the identity of the suspect and were able to locate and arrest him with the assistance of Bridgeport Police and Fairfield Police. And Bridgeport police were investigating reports of shots fired on the East End Thursday evening, according to the Connecticut Post. Preliminary reports indicated that between 15 and 20 shots had been fired in the area of 4th Street near Connecticut or Stratford Avenue. Three suspects reportedly fled the scene, one or more of them possibly in a gold Ford Escort. City officials last updated that figure to somewhere between 20 and 30 shots, with more than one person having fired. Av Harris, a spokesman for Mayor Joe Gannam, said shortly before 8 o'clock that there were no suspects as of yet and also no reports of any injuries. The investigation is ongoing. And traffic, parking, economic development, zoning, bicycle and pedestrian usage, and transit facilities, these are some of the topics that planners from Monroe and Trumbull would like to get feedback on from the public during an engineering and planning study for routes 25 and 111. The public hearing is scheduled for 6.30 p.m. in the Monroe Elementary School Cafe on Wednesday, April 20th. Rob LeBrandy, Trumbull's land use planner, will be in attendance along with Will Agresta, who serves as the planning and zoning administrator for Trumbull. The purpose of the study is to identify strategies to improve traffic operations along Route 25 and Route 111 corridors, especially during peak commuting hours. According to a press release, the study will address existing needs and deficiencies, current traffic operations and congestion, along with future traffic growth and development. They will also discuss bicycle accommodations as well as pedestrian and transit usage. And in other news today, according to the Associated Press, a member of a Roman Catholic religious order who worked at parochial schools in West Haven is facing child pornography charges. Police say 73-year-old Thomas Sawyer, a member of the Brotherhood of the Holy Cross, was charged Thursday with first-degree possession of child pornography. Investigators say they found hundreds of pornographic images and a dozen videos on his computers. He was freed after posting a $25,000 bond. He worked until last year as IT director at Holy Cross High School in Waterbury and now lives in a medical facility in New York. Sawyer was living at a residence hall at St. John Vinami Church in West Haven when the investigation began last summer. His attorney, William Dow, tells the New Haven Register that Sawyer faces no allegations of any inappropriate conduct with children. And according to the Connecticut Mirror, a sh as sharp criticism built Thursday of its proposal to end state education aid to 28 of the state's wealthiest towns, 
The administration of Governor Daniel P. Malloy released data to show that most of the towns affected have among the lowest mill rates in the state and rely relatively on little state aid. Facing a sizable budget deficit, the governor on Tuesday proposed eliminating all of the $25 million that the state currently provides to the wealthiest communities through education cost-sharing grants, a move decried by Republican legislators who largely pre represent those communities. According to Devin Puglia, spokesman for Governor Malloy, we're in a new economic reality with fewer resources and it requires difficult choices. The governor's proposed budget shields the state's 30 poorest communities from any cuts. Another 111 middle-income districts would lose $39.6 million. But we're going to switch gears now and throw it over to Donald Dang, who's filling in today with the forecast, like in the old days, Don. It is. The old times are here again, and uh, what's, what's here now for almost the first time this year, nice weather also. Uh, bringing, that, bringing that with me, you can thank me later. We have a brilliant day today, sunny, about 62 degrees, a slight breeze. Tonight, a little bit on the cooler side, into the 30s and there are some frost warnings in some places. Uh, and then it just gets better from there. Tomorrow, sunny, 63. Sunday, sunny, 66. Monday, sunny, 70. Uh, you know, slight breeze each day, but nothing but sun in the forecast as far as the eye can see. Right now, outside the Shelton studio here, it is 55 degrees, 53 in Ridgefield, 52 on the water in Greenwich. Some good news there, Don. Thank you. Well, we're going to take a break, and we, when we come back, Don is going to give us a look back on this date in history. We have a sports update with Rob, and we have some more news coming up after this. Had a sports injury or a slip and fall that needs immediate care? Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care gives you direct access to an orthopedic specialist fast without an appointment. Biking, golf, tennis, soccer, whatever the sports injury is, sprain or fracture, Coastal Ortho Express can help. Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care open Monday through Saturday in the I Park building at 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk or go to CoastalOrthoExpress.com. That's CoastalOrthoExpress.com. Like them on Facebook. It's time to come back to hometown banking, where people are taken into account, not just balances. Where community comes first. A place where there's more than one kind of interest. Where they not only know your name, they know your dog's name too. It's time to expect more. It's time to bank well. Bank smart. Bank local. Bank well. Until April 30th, choose $150 cash for a Smeg toaster when you open a My Bank Well Choice checking account with a minimum of $2,000. A Better View Window Cleaning Plus has been cleaning glass all over Connecticut for over 20 years. They also specialize in cleaning chandeliers, mirrors, skylights, tiles, and will power wash anything that needs cleaning. They hold an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau and are fully insured and bonded. When you deal with a Better View, you're dealing with the best, not the rest. Call today for a free estimate, 203-284-8836, or visit them online, abetterviewcleaning.com. Hi, I'm Rob Adams with my good friend Donald Eng. We're the home team for Nutmeg Sports, Monday through Wednesday at 2 o'clock right here on the HAN Network. We are the place for all things Connecticut sports. So come hang out with us on Nutmeg Sports. Don? They don't call him the best color man in the game for nothing. Nutmeg Sports, 2 o'clock, Monday through Wednesday right here on the HAN Network. We're back on this Friday edition of your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski, and it's time to throw it back over to Don Ang for a look at this day in history. Well, Kate, it is April 15th, tax day. Uh, we're going to No, I know, exactly. Uh, right. go ahead, Don. And we're going to go all the way back starting in 1892. The General Electric Company formed when Thomas Edison merges Edison General Electric with the Thomas Houston Electric Company of Massachusetts. In 1896, GE would go on to be one of the original 12 companies listed on the misnamed 
Dow Jones Industrial Average. It's not an average, it's a sum, but never mind. It is now the sixth largest company in the country, making everything from light bulbs to jet engines to military cannons, believe it or not. To 1955, the first franchised McDonald's restaurant opened by Super Patriot Ray Kroc in De Plains, Illinois. It, is, it was actually the ninth McDonald's restaurant ever opened with the other eight having been opened by the original McDonald Brothers. Kroc's aggressive business practices drove the McDonald's Brothers from the company. They actually lost the right to use their own name on the restaurants they themselves had opened. 1989, Chinese political and economic reformer Hu Yaobang dies. The 73-year-old had been exiled twice during the Maoist Cultural Revolution, and at his state funeral, the Chinese government released a sanitized version of his life story. A small group of students took to Tiananmen Square in protest, demanding the government release the true story of his life. The student group would ultimately grow to over 100,000 strong in the Tiananmen Square protests. And finally, now we go to 1947 for this. Maybe. The pressure on Jackie Robinson was enormous. The Dodgers owner, Branch Rickey, who took the risk of hiring the first black player, warned Robinson he would be held to the highest standards imaginable. I'll certainly do my very best on the field. I'm very sure you will. That was Jackie Robinson, making, uh, who debuted on this day in 1947 at for the Brooklyn Dodgers, breaking baseball's color barrier. By the end of the 1950s, blacks in baseball were represented in greater numbers than in the general population, everywhere that is, except Boston, where Red Sox owner Tom Yawkey refused to field a black player until the Massachusetts Commission Against Discrimination announced that it was going to investigate the team. Robinson would later call Yawkey the most bigoted man he ever met, but Robinson ultimately the victor here, making his Major League debut on this day, 1947. That is your look back in history, and I am Donald Ng. All right, thanks so much, Don. Well, we are now going to throw it to Rob Adams for a Nutmeg Sports Update. Check it out. Thanks, Kate, and good morning, everyone. Busy day yesterday, as always. Springtime just loaded with lots of games, so let's take a look at the scoreboard. In baseball, we had back-to-back 4-3 -back to -three wins as Ward beat Weston and Danbury did the same to Massac. Greenwich scored three in the top of the seventh. They held on for a 6-5 win over New Milford. That's the first loss for New Milford on the year. Matt McKernan had three hits and drove in four for the Cadets. They beat Bethel 7-6. To, to softball, Gabby Natoli allowed two hits over six to improve to 2-1 and one on the year as Ward shut down Bunnell. It was Danbury over Bethel 7-4 and Massac beat Ludlow 9-6. On to boys lacrosse, Ward over Central 17-2. Staples took care of St. John the Baptist from New York 13-5, a 15-3 win for New Canaan over Stanford, and Ludlow by 5 over Connard. Over to girls lacrosse now, Staples took care of Newtown 16-12. While New Canaan beat Danbury 16-4, Catherine Granito had two goals and two assists. Ridgefield needed overtime to beat John Jay out of New York 13-12. Kimmy Weinstock's goal 16 seconds into the extra session gave the Tigers the win over the Indians. The Tigers are now 5-0. Allie Myers scored three times for Ridgefield. And Ludlow got six goals from Regan Steed and five goals from Megan Donahue. They beat McMahon 18 to eight. To boys tennis now, it was Westhill over Danbury 6-1. New Canaan shut down Trinity Catholic and Staples over Fairfield Prep. In girls tennis, Westhill got a 5-2 win over Danbury. In boys golf, Danbury won by eight strokes as Max Theodorakis shot an even par 35. The Hatters beat Ridgefield by eight. We have lacrosse for you tomorrow, the Battle of the Sound on the HAN Network at Ridgefield High School, game number one at three, game, uh, game number one, excuse me, at one, game number two at 3.30. We'll see two teams from Long Island, Gardy, Garden City and Manhasset, taking on both Darien and Ridgefield. A.J. Simonowski, Eric Gendron, and I will all have the call tomorrow from Ridgefield, but that'll do it with sports. I'm Rob Adams. Kate, back to you. All right, thanks so much to Rob. Now getting back to a little more news today, as Don said earlier, it is supposed to be tax day today, April 15th, but the federal tax deadline for Connecticut residents to file their tax returns this year is Monday, April 18th, so all you slackers like myself have a little bit more time. The windows at most local post offices will close at 5 p.m. Monday, so if you're using stamps and need to have your mail postmarked, 
April 18th, you have to get to the post office windows before that deadline. The reason for this year's switch from the normal April 15th deadline is that Emancipation Day, April 16th, is an official public holiday in the District of Columbia. And when it falls on a Saturday, which it does this year, then Emancipation Day moves to the previous day. That means it will be observed today, April 15th. Since Emancipation Day is a legal holiday, it gets precedence over the April 15th tax deadline. That means the federal tax deadline is pushed to the following Monday. And in Maine and Massachusetts, taxpayers have until Tuesday, April 19th to file their individual income tax returns because Monday is Patriot's Day. So look at that. And in other news today, 35 Stratford residents will travel to Stratford-upon-Avon in England next week for a gathering of the Straffords of the world. Members of the Stratford Sister Cities Committee, including those in Stratford Sister Cities Chorus, are trekking to England next week for a special gathering of the Straffords of the world. They will also be in Stratford-upon-Avon on April 23rd for a special event marking the 400th anniversary of the death of William Shakespeare. Prince Charles of the British royal family is expected to be a guest at for this celebration of the famous playwright in his hometown. The residents of Stratford, Connecticut join the residents, as we said, of Stratford-upon-Avon, Stratford, Ontario, Stratford, Prince Edward Island in Canada, Stratford, New Zealand, and Stratford, Australia. The local contingent will depart from the Baldwin Center early Sunday morning and will travel to JFK Airport. They will spend three nights in London before heading to Stratford-upon-Avon, where they will stay as guests in the home of locals. Every two years, residents of the Straffords of the world meet in one of the towns. Two years ago, residents of the other Straffords came to Connecticut for the biennial gathering. And a bill that would hold kennel services, service facilities more accountable was passed by the House of Representatives and now goes to the Senate for consideration, according to State Representative Kim Rose, who championed the bill. HB 5148, which was passed unanimously, will make revisions to existing law to require anyone who offers commercial kennel services, such as boarding or grooming, to include their licensing information for their facility in all advertising for their business. Representative Rose said that after working on this bill for more than four years, I'm delighted that we were able to agree that this is a consumer-friendly bill that ought to get passed. There's a lot more on that bill at MilfordMirror.com. Well, we're going to step out for a quick break. When we come back, we're going to recap some of the top stories we're following today. We'll take another look at your forecast and wrap things up for the weekend after this. For more than 50 years, Triple S has been Fairfield County's expert service for carpet, upholstery, and drapery cleaning. We provide the best in repairs and in-depth restoration, understanding fabrics and how to properly clean and restore them. Our staff will come to your home to clean your wall-to-wall -wall carpet to perfection. We can also pick up your fine carpets and bring them to our facilities. With locations in Norwalk, Stamford, and Stratford, Triple S will get the job done fast, big or small. At Triple S, you can count on our people as well as our cleaning. Find us at triplesclean.com or 203-847-8. Join the HAN Network and Make-A-Wish Connecticut to help make travel wishes come true for local kids with life-threatening medical conditions. Donate your unused airline miles to the HAN Network Wishes in Flight campaign. Over 70% of wishes granted involve travel, and your unused airline miles can help make kids' dreams become a reality. Plus, once you donate your miles to Make-A-Wish, they will never expire. Donate your unused miles and help the HAN Network share the power of a wish. Walter Stewart's Market in New Canaan is your time-saving local shopping destination for the best of spring. Find many of your favorite products, from great specials on everyday items to the freshest organic produce, artisanal cheeses, and grass-fed steaks. Drop off your knives to be sharpened, grab a beautiful bouquet of spring flowers, and stop in next door for a wine tasting. Plus, their personal staff is always ready to lend a helping hand. So stop in to Walter Stewart's Market, 229 Elm Street, today, or shop online at stewartsmarket.com. For over 25 years, Mike Sizzik Painting and Wallpapering has been the name to know for residential and commercial properties in Fairfield County. He uses only the top brands, including Benjamin Moore, for impeccable preparation and lasting quality. Call Mike now and receive $500 off any job over $7,000. Mike is currently accepting reservations for spring, so call him today at 203-770-8869 or 203 -770 972-3310. For your custom painting, finishing, and staining needs, it's Mike Sizzik. You are watching the HAN Network, and you're not alone. 
Nearly half a million viewers enjoyed our broadcast in the first five months. Advertise on the network that reaches Fairfield County, Connecticut's most engaged audience. Contact Jessica Murren, Advertising Director, at 203-273-7312 or email jessica at han.network. You are watching. And we're back on this Friday edition of your Coffee Break. I'm Kate Chaplinski, taking a look at some of the top stories we're following today, including that family members of the students and adults killed in the 2012 shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary School will proceed with their lawsuit against gun companies after a Superior Court judge in Bridgeport on Thursday denied motions to have the case dismissed. Judge Barbara Bellis denied dismissal motions that were filed by Remington's Arms Company, Bushmaster Firearms, Camphor Holding, and Riverview Gun Sales of East Windsor to have a lawsuit brought by relatives of the Sandy Hook victims tossed out. All those gun sellers had sought to have the case dismissed under the Protection of Lawful Commerce in Arms Act and the Connecticut Unfair Trade Practices Act. Josh Koskoff, who is the attorney representing the families, called the decision a huge victory, but you can get more details at StraffordStar.com. And Milford police have arrested a suspect in Wednesday's robbery at People's United Bank in downtown Milford. Police took the suspect, 37-year-old Paul Bano, of Bridgeport into custody around 11 o'clock Wednesday night and charged him with robbery, larceny, and possession of narcotics. The robbery took place around 2.15 in the afternoon on Wednesday. Police said the suspect entered the bank through the front door, approaching a teller, passing a note that said, give me the money and you won't get shot. According to witnesses, no weapon was displayed during the robbery, and after receiving the money, the suspect fled on foot toward Central Avenue. A police canine was used to track the suspect to the area of Central Avenue and Lafayette Street, where it is believed he fled in a vehicle. Police quickly circulated the photo you saw there of the suspect through local media. Investigators received a tip regarding the identity of the suspect and were able to locate him and arrest him with some assistance from Bridgeport and Fairfield Police Departments. And Bridgeport Police were investigating reports of shots fired on the East End Thursday evening, according to the Connecticut Post. Three suspects reportedly fled the scene near 4th Street and Connecticut or Stratford Avenue, one of them possibly in a gold Ford Escort. City officials said that the shots fired were somewhere between 20 and 30, and with more than one person having fired those shots. Av Harris, a spokesman for Mayor Joe Gannam, said shortly before 8 o'clock that there were no suspects as of yet and no injuries reported. The investigation is ongoing. And a member of a Roman Catholic religious order who worked at parochial schools in the West Haven area is facing child pornography charges. Police say 73-year-old Thomas Sawyer, a member of the Brotherhood of the Holy Cross, was charged Thursday with first-degree possession of child pornography. Investigators say they found hundreds of pornographic images and a dozen videos on his computers. He was freed after posting a $25,000 bond. Sawyer worked until last year as an IT director at Holy Cross High School in Waterbury and now lives in a medical facility in New York. Sawyer was living at a residence hall at St. John Vinnemi Church in West Haven when the investigation began last summer. His lawyer, William Dow, tells the New Haven Register that Sawyer faces no allegations of inappropriate contact with children. All right, going to throw it back over to Don Ang for one final look at the forecast. I think it's all good news, Don. It is all good news. In fact, the news is getting better uh, just in the last 20 minutes. It has warmed up to 56 degrees out there right now, continuing with the brilliant sunshine. Going to hit about 62 today and then uh, and then before dropping down into the mid 30s overnight there are some scattered frost warnings in the forecast and then tomorrow sunny 63 sunday sunny 69 monday sunny 72 uh, tuesday possible showers and then sunny and then wednesday sunny again so it really doesn't get very much better than that right now as i mentioned outside the shelton studio it is 56 degrees 51 on the hilltop in greenwich there 52 i'm sorry on the hilltop in ridgefield greenwich's Hill, Richfield on the hilltop, Greenwich is on Richfield the water. On the hill. <laughs> 52 on the water in Greenwich. Uh, gr great forecast, Kate. All right. Thanks so much, Sean. Thanks for filling in today at the weather desk once again. Oh, it's like old times. It is. Well, we are going to wrap things up on this Friday edition of your coffee break, but still a big weekend for the HAN Network. Tomorrow, a boys lacrosse double header that starts at 1 o'clock. So check that out live. We'll have the latest for you. And 
Of course, your coffee break will be back.